Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord. Come on, come on. Let it rise among us. Let the praise of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, come on. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praise of our King rise among us. Let it rise. And they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gate, O Jerusalem. This is the call to worship, and the true worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Gracious God, we bless you, we love you, we thank you for this day, we thank you for this worship opportunity. We ask that you bless everyone under the sound of my voice, but let the glory of the Lord rise among us. God bless you on this day. Uh, we'd like to welcome each of you today to the worship service with the Friendship Baptist Church in Schenectady, New York. We give all honor and praise to God our Father for allowing us this opportunity to come and worship him in spirit and in truth. I am the Reverend William Lynn Hamilton, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here, guests and members uh, to our worship service, again, 407 Union Street. It is May 24th, the fourth Sunday of May 2020, and it is our pleasure to be here with you on this day. We welcome uh, Lady Nicole, who is here today. Uh, we also acknowledge Noel Hamilton and Michelle Rodriguez. God bless you both, and thought it not robbery for being here today to lend your voices unto God, of course. Uh, we are so pleased and continue to be pleased with a long relationship and the service of, of uh, Brother Azam Hamid, who's been here for over 35 years with the Friendship Baptist Church. He's faithful to God and to friendship. And so we thank him for sharing his musical gifts with the people of God. Uh, we're so happy to have Jocelyn Hamilton as well, percussionist extraordinaire, uh, uh, who is here today. Um, who is also making a joyful noise unto the Lord. We seek your continued prayers for those who are sick and bereaved. It is with great sorrow that we share the passing of a uh, longstanding member, uh, Woody Fulton, who passed uh, within the past week. Uh, but we know that absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, so we don't wonder where he is. And we understand that we shall see him again. And so we bless God for his long life here. We bless God for his family and the friendship family, which he made an important impact and uh, uh, a work here, contribution to the Friendship Baptist Church. We have an announcement for those who still would uh, like to uh, pay their assessment for Women's Day. Men, $50. Men, $50. Please uh, send your checks and monies to the Friendship Baptist Church. Women have been given the marvelous gift of, of giving $100. So we ask that you be mindful with that, for that. And again, you must understand that it is above your tithes and your offering. God is so good to us and that we are obedient in our living, of course, and our giving. We're encouraged by those who continue to meet us on Facebook. 
those worshipers that are in their homes that allow friendship to come into their homes to worship. Continue to keep on uh, following us and worshiping with us because though you're not here, we know that you're here with us and vice versa. Uh, for those who have shared an interest of coming to the Friendship Baptist Church, we will meet as soon as that's safe. We would not want to jeopardize your health by coming in because you can worship and be a worshiper anywhere and everywhere you go. You are saved and a child of God everywhere you go. The thing is, is that we have to go outside these walls and make disciples of all nations. And that's what we're doing here. When it's safe, we're going to come back. But right now, this is the venue. This is the way that we continue to praise. And we'll never give up on God because he never gave up on us. So we pray that you'll be blessed by the worship service today. And we'll now have a song of shamanic preparation.
going to put on my robe and tell a story. Could you do that? cracks the sky. He's coming back for you and I. Soon as I get home. Put your hands together right where you are. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. soon as I get home. God bless you. God bless you on this day. Some have gone already home. Some are in his presence. Oh, just to see his face. Oh, what a story to tell. Amen. Gracious God, we bless you. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for those who are here. We thank you for those who fill this worship service with music. We thank you for uh, Brother Zom and his family. We thank you for uh, the Hamilton family. We thank you for the church family. We thank you for those who are watching. We thank you, Lord, for uh, Brother Todd Jones and his family and uh, Deacon Popo. God bless you. Who find it not robbery to sacrifice to serve. Amen. Put your hands together at home. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. There is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. Um, and it is found in Matthew in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew uh, 28, 20. 28, 20. Uh, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Jesus says, lo, I am with you always even until the end of the world. I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Using as a subject, you are not alone. You are not alone, for he says, I am with you always, even until the end of the world, the end of this age. You are <clears throat> not alone. In this particular passage, Jesus promises the believers then and now, the believers of all nations, the believers of all generations, that they are not alone and neither will they ever be alone. He assures that he is with them and us always. In these times, in these times that uh, confront our nation and our cities and society, uh, uh, we have been isolated and we've been distanced uh, in our respected homes. But even though we are sitting at home alone, he tells us that we are never alone. We've been distancing for maybe 50, 60, and seven days. But even still, we are not 
alone. <clears throat> Even though distancing and isolation is for our own good, it still leaves us with a sense of loneliness. Um, you don't have to be alone to be lonely. Uh, loneliness is, is not about a number, it's about a feeling. You can be in the midst of many and still be lonely. Lonely is a, a, an emotional feeling that is caused by the sadness of a possible separation from another or others. And it elicits a response from us that says, I feel alone. I'm lonely. I feel alone. Uh, though you feel alone and you say that you might feel alone, Jesus says that you're not alone. He says, I am with you always, even until the ends of this age. Through your hills and your valleys, you're not alone. Through your ups and downs, you're not alone. Through dangers seen and unseen, you're not alone. I am always with you. Jesus promises his presence every day, each day, all day. For always, he says, he is with us, and we are never alone. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I will provide and be by your side at all times. I'll be there to hold and protect you. If you trust me, I'll be there to help you and to make it through whatever the situation is. He says, I am with you always. I will deliver you through the fire, through the flood. I will deliver you. Whether you are at home, I'm with you. In the hospital, I'm with you. In prison, I am with you. If your separation is due to incarceration, death, divorce, whatever it may be, abandonment, he says, I am with you for I am a friend that stick closer than any brother. You are not alone. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for he is with us. You're never alone. His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. No, we are not alone. When he says, I will never leave you, he means he will never leave you. You see, in this case, in other cases, never means never. So he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Even though you may feel lonely, what we're to do is to call upon the Lord and connect with God and to reach out to the one true God that has never left us alone. You see, the one thing is you understand. You may have and others may have walked away from God, but God has never walked away from you. You may have forgotten about God, but God has never forgotten about you. You may have one time broke up with God, but God has never broke up with you. He is always in your life if you would accept him, and he's always there. So we can call on him and reach out to the one who never left us. You see, Jesus is closer to you than your next thought. Jesus is closer to you than the breath that you take. Jesus is closer to you than the heart that beats within. He is so close unto you that it surprises you and me why we don't call him because he's always there. You see, the thing is, it's so simple uh, that it makes it difficult. Sometimes you're too close to something that you don't see what's right in front of you. He is right with you at all times. And if you say he abides inside of you, the spirit of the, of the God, of God the Father is in us. But we sometimes forget and feel alone. The other day I was talking to, in fact it was yesterday, uh, 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 Deacon and Trainer Ronald Popo and, 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 and hope to be Deacon Etoya Jones. We'll talk about that later. Um, we were saying... When we are alone, what do we do? We're you know, sitting, social distancing. And um, we were talking for a while, and, and, and Brother Popo said, we call upon Jesus. Or why? Because he's always there. He 
he's never too busy. He never puts us on hold. He picks up and he's there as soon as we call. And we can call him at any time. And you can't call Pastor Hamilton 3.30 in the morning every morning because he's not going to pick up. Ronald was right. <laughs> if you call me 3.30 in the morning every morning, I'm not sure. And so I appreciate that because it tells us that Jesus is always right there. He always has the right answer. He's never too busy to hear your call and your cry. And so that's one of the reasons that in our hour, we go to God in prayer and we go to Jesus. See, the one thing is, the Bible says, uh, 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 pray always, pray without ceasing, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. It says, come to the throne of grace boldly. The Bible says, the Lord will hear when you cry and you call. He bids us to call him at any time because he's always there. He says, call me at any time, and he promises to be there we are never alone except for sometimes we fail to call upon him but he's never too busy it's interesting that before every significant undertaking it was the custom of jesus to go in solitude to retreat to a quiet place where he could be alone with the father before he began his public ministry. After he was baptized, he went into the wilderness and was there 40 days and 40 nights praying and fasting. And then he was tempted. If he didn't go into the wilderness and fast and pray, it would have been more difficult to deal with the temptation. However, before he began his ministry, he had to retreat and be alone. Before he chose the 12 disciples, he spent the night and 24 hours in prayer. Uh, when he heard that John, his first cousin, had died, he went and retreated and was in prayer. Before he was arrested, on his way to Calvary, he retreated in the Garden of Gethsemane and went deeper into the garden where he could be alone with the Lord. Don't you know that when we are alone and when we feel that we are alone, it's God's time to talk to us and prepare us for the next step. When Jesus was going through his darkest hour, alone on the cross, he went to the Father in prayer. Even in the darkest hour, that tells us that even when we're in a situation where it's life or death and it seems like it's all we have to stay alive, we are not alone even in that situation. We can go to God. I love Paul because he said, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If I live here, I'll serve him and his Holy Spirit indwells with me or inside of me and I will be with him to serve him. And if I leave here, I will be in his presence. No, not alone. He's with us all of the time. You have to be careful about the time that we spend by ourselves and encourage ourselves. When we look at 1 Samuel 30, we find that David is home alone. But home is not what it used to be. For David, his home is destroyed. It's burnt down into ashes. All his uh, possessions are gone. The people on his side and his friends want to kill him. He feels physically and spiritually defeated and dejected. He has no help from the outside, and he has great hurt on the inside. But he did not curse his time alone. David encouraged himself in the Lord. 
David encouraged himself. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't wait for the praise group to get ready. He didn't wait till he had the clearing to go to church. He didn't wait for his friends to come over. He didn't wait for his friends to call. He didn't wait for good news on the outside. He talked to God, the only one that was around from the very beginning and would continue to. While he was alone, he cried out to God and prayed and encouraged himself and worshiped God and thanked him for all that he had done. He had a revival inside of him that changed him on the inside and he became more encouraged. He had a prayer meeting by himself in his closet sitting on a heap of ashes. You see, you can have high praise even when you're sitting in a place that really ain't that pretty because your praise has nothing to do with where you sit. It's where you look up to God and praise the holy, the holy God above. And so even in the midst of despair, he reached out to the divine in prayer and in praise. And after spending time with the Lord in prayer, he came out stronger. He regained all that he had lost and he had more after than when he went through. You're going through something right now, but God is preparing you for something to give you that and more even when you come out. You're going to come out stronger and better than ever before, but it's based on the time that you spend with God. The time that you feel alone is not the time to regret, dismiss, and walk away from God. It is time to invite him into your situation. It is the time that has been set aside from all of the distractions in your life the things that you put ahead of your relationship with God for such a long time. Now he wants to speak with you now that he has your attention. We have to invite him. And in any time we invite him, he doesn't come alone. He brings three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and you. You are never alone, but we have to call upon him. This is the time for you to be alone with God because you and he are writing the next chapter in your life and he wants to be involved in it because he has uh, 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 some place for you to go and things for you to do because the righteous man, his steps are ordered by God. But if we don't spend time with him, we don't get the marching orders. So while we have the time, while there's a hush in your life, you are not alone. You have a time of solitude that you can fulfill yourself in the inside and you'll get closer to God. So you can get to know him and, and get to know yourself even better. He's writing the next chapter in your life. He's preparing your mind and your spirit for that which is coming next. You see, the one thing is, he wants you to have a life that's abundant and a fulfilled life. It is a time to recommit, yes, to ministry, but also to your hopes and to your dreams, to the things that you desire. It is the time that you can begin to work on your new career. It is a time that you can learn that new skill. It's a time for you to learn more about yourself and more about your family. It's a time to rekindle the productive relationships in your life and maybe separate from the destructive relationships in your life. That friend who never sows into you but sucks the life out of you. The person who sabotages 
everything that you've ever endeavored and even it said you probably won't make it that is not the time to this is not the time to spend with that person because the bible says you can do all things through christ who strengthens you who invests in you it may be time to change some things and then replace it with god it may be time to allow yourself to heal from that hurt. It's time to let it heal. Because quite honestly, there's some hurts that we don't want to heal. But you will never be healed unless that hurt is healed. And the one thing is, the only person you can fix during this time is yourself. Don't get on the phone and call somebody, let me tell you what's wrong with you. It's time that you would heal and allow God to heal yourself or heal you in that situation. It's time. You are in the right place, the right time to hear God more clearly than ever before, to see God more clearly than ever before. You see, the thing is, this is not a sermon to have you jumping and shouting. But it is a time to reflect. And then when you come out of this situation, after spending time with God, then it will be time to sing and shout and praise. But the time that you spend with God now is the, is the footsteps in the beginning and the foundation of the future that you are creating. We accomplish things based on our preparation. And the outcome has a lot to do with how we prepare. And so we have to prepare ourselves in this moment in which we feel as though we are all alone. He says you are never alone. Come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. If you are lonely, Jesus is the answer. If you're brokenhearted, Jesus is the answer. If you're depressed and distressed, Jesus is the answer. If you are in want, Jesus is the answer. Lost, alone, feel forgotten, you are in the plans of God and you are never alone. No, you are not alone. I promise you, in Jesus, the best is yet to come. Oh, gracious God, we bless you. We love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you, God, that we are never, ever alone. No matter our situation, no matter what's going through, We're not alone. We thank you, God, because we could have given up on ourselves. But you didn't give up on us. We could have walked away, but we don't have to be in church to worship because we are the church. The people are the church. In fact, this time we got out the building and started sharing the word of God outside of these walls so we thank you God we thank you for all those who were under the sound of our voice and we pray that they will invite you into their house and that they'll never feel alone and everyone who loved the Lord said amen I need you If you're here today and you are alone 
we pray that you would invite Jesus Christ into your life. He will meet you there and be there for you. However, if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, invite him to be your savior, your savior and Lord. You see, you don't have to do anything because he did it all on the cross over 2,000 years ago. We invite you to make Jesus Christ the savior of your life. It is the biggest choice you'll ever make. And if you make the right choice, you'll never regret it. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we have one who can save us from our sin and the penalty of sin. Lord, I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I believe that you died on a cross just for me and you rose up with all power in your hands and you paid my sin debt on the cross. I turn from my sins and turn to you and will follow you as savior and Lord. If you said this prayer, welcome to God's family and your great inheritance in the Lord. Start reading your Bible, join a church that believes in Jesus Christ and preaches the true word of God and studies the true word of God. If you believe that church for you is the Friendship Baptist Church in Schenectady, New York, please contact us at our website, Friendship Baptist Church NY. Dot org. We ask God to continue to bless you and thank you for joining us in this worship service. Yes. If you would like to be a blessing to the Friendship Baptist Church, the church that you're watching right now and that you're a member of, if you'd like to be a financial blessing, please Reach us at our website, Friendship Baptist Church, ny.org, and click the portion that says give. If you'd like to write a check, please make the check out to the Friendship Baptist Church. We're here at 47, 407 Union Street, Schenectady, New York. God bless you. God bless you. We pray that you continue to observe all the health and safety measures in this current COVID virus season. We're going to be closed here until you're safe. But we will continue to worship. God bless you once more and again. To those who have assembled today, for you who are watching, gracious God, we bless you. Gracious God, we love you. We thank you, God, for the word that went forth. We thank you for those who receive the word, those who will live the word. We ask you to bless us in our hour and our time of feeling alone. And let us trust in your word that says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of this age. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling, and to present us before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now henceforth and forevermore. And everyone who loved the Lord, said amen. Who would have greatest serve the Lord?